Okay, well, welcome to Mont Park for the big clash between McLeod, the visiting side, and the home side, Montmorency. We're at the Montmorency number one oval here, and uh, the toss has been won by we don't know who, but going to the right of screen will be Montmorency. We'll call that the Lowell Plenty end, and to the left of screen will be the end to which McLeod. Sorry. Sorry, get it right, son. We're off to a bad start here. Going to the right of screen is the uh, is McLeod going to the Lower Plenty end. Mont going left of screen to the Greensboro end. In the ruck there, we've got bigger, bigger Sakaro helping. He's a huge man. He'd stand what six foot seven, at least I reckon. Six foot eight. We'd go for six foot eight. He's he's bloody big, isn't he? He wears number fifty one. Now he's partnering crime in many games as uh, Paddy Fitzgerald, but he might not be on the field today. I don't see him. Anyway, we're about to go get on the way here. It's uh, oh, helping in the ruck up against Matty Waller from McLeod. All oh, the centre of grounds are just a huge mud heap. There's a clearance there by Stephen By from Montmorency. He gets down to half forward. In there fighting for the ball is Nan Curvis back in the seniors this week. Gets a handball over to John Andrew. He gets the ball up to centre wing where the ball is again taken by Stephen but it's intercepted by McLeod there looks like Bianchi and he gets the ball up to half forward and a ground level McLeod pick up might be Brannley there he has a shot on goal uh, this falls a little short and in the way is the defender for Greensboro to Montmorency oh gee get it right son. <laughs> Dean Giles took the mark he got it out to his teammate on the outer wing there on the scoreboard side of the ground we might work the ball from to half back. Looking to bring the ball up, just comes up to the right on the wing position, right in front of the scoreboard there. Where is off the hands and over the line and out of bounds. Scoreboard reading zero 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 zero. All zeros. No one to score yet. Okay, there's the throw in. Comes the ground level ball. Players in hard there. It's dirty, it's messy, it's muddy, it's ugh. It's a day where it's real, uh, it's wet and it's just yuck. So it's going to be one of those days where people are going to be in, uh, just covered in mud by the end of the day. It'll be hard to pick up on numbers and uh, we suspect there'll be many a ball up. And there is a ball up. The umpire throws the ball in the air. Walter in the ruck there for McLeod comes down to no one in particular and the umpire says we'll have a well someone's caught in possession there and there was a uh, a free kick going to McLeod to Dave Adams and he drives the ball up to the forward pocket uh, looking for Lynch in front is a Montmorency player who has no trouble in belting the ball over the line and out of bounds. Looks like umpire Fife is uh, in charge of proceedings here today at the uh, Monte Oval. Oh, there's a kick off the ground there, and it's through. Oh, it's on the goal line. It's through for a goal to McLeod. Gee, uh, I didn't pick up who kicked that off the ground there. Who got that one off the ground there? Who got that one off the ground? Anyone know? Scooter, Scooter White, number nine for McLeod. So they were able to suckle that one through. It looked like it just made it over the line. So the first goal of the day goes to McLeod. They go to one goal, six points. Montmorency yet to score. Ball thrown in the air this time by umpire Fife. Oh, nice tap out there by, by the big fella, Matty Waller. He backs up and gets a handball out. Just looking for Scooter White, but uh, comes to no one in particular. But the umpire's picked out a free kick to Montmorency and they take a free kick in the middle of the ground. They drive the ball down over half forward. Oh, there's a there's a push out there, but the umpire will have none of that and there's a mark to a Limbach, number nine. Pettifer, sorry, Limbach's number eight. Jeez, get your mind on the job, Gary. Study the, study the record a bit clearer. So, so Pettifer's got the mark. He's marked uh, 45 metres out from goal, directly in front. Fancies his chances. Comes in, kicks. Looks good off the boot. Maybe a little bit to the right side, it is. To his far side, and it's through for one behind one point. 
So first score of the day to Montmorency. Montmorency one point, trailing McLeod one goal, six points. Okay, Richard Andrew brings the ball back in front of the pavilion side. Oh, big pack of players up there. Big Pat Fitzgerald, number 61, flew high, couldn't hang on to the ball. In hard there is... Uh, in hard there is uh, Montmorency play. He's tackled heavily by John Andrew. And the umpires rule a free kick to Montmorency. The recipient of that free kick is the little fella, Jesse Donaldson, and he just chips a, a nice little pass further down the field, and there's a lead-up mark taken by, just pick his number up, ah, oh, that's that man, Limbach again. It's like uh, Nan Curvis for McLeod has got the job on uh, Pettifer, sorry, Pettifer, get it right, son, Pettifer, number nine, Limbach number eight. So Pettifer comes in on a 45-degree angle, uh, he looked, oh, again, his shot has faded to the right, so much so it, it hasn't even scored and it's been knocked away by the McLeod players who have gone in hard there. Gee, they attacked the ball hard, those McLeod boys, and eventually they forced the ball to the outer half-back flank area and it's over the line and out of bounce. There you go, helping in the ruck there. He's, he's got about two inches in height over uh, Matty Walter, the McLeod ruckman. I think Walter will be about six foot five, so that he, yeah, it's around the six foot seven inch mark. The uh, the big ruckman there from Montmorency. Montmorency have gone backwards to, to then come forward, but in the road there was John Andrew. Got a handball over to Scooter White. He gets the ball back to uh, Richard Andrew. He can't get his kick away, and he's all wrapped up there. And there's a free kick to Montmorency. Okay, Montmorency bring the ball down to the forward pocket, looking for a lead up there from uh, Pettifer, but in the road there, might have been Scooter White on that occasion. He brings the ball out wide, too wide on this occasion, it's over the line and out of bounce. So Montmorency to take the resulting free kick there, they're about 60 metres from goal, just over near the light tower there. They bring centre the ball, looking for a big fella, number 42 there. And it's the experienced man, Keenan, who's taken the mark, true centre-half forward position. Now, he's still a fair way from goal. He'd be uh, 45 to 50 metres out from goal, directly in front. He fancies his chances. I mean, early in this game, the ball is uh, still unaffected uh, by the moisture. It was a nice kick, oh, but he too, like... Pettifer before him is faded to the right and it's through for one behind, one point. So the second point of the day goes on the scoreboard to Montmorency. So they're on two points, trailing McLeod, one straight goal, six points. Nice kick in by Richard Andrew. Kicks it up, looking for a McLeod player there who flew high, couldn't quite hang on to the ball there. Was was Murray? The ball comes to the ground level in the way there. Is Dave Adams? He picks the ball up. He's he's tackled uh, strongly there. The um, there's a free kick to McLeod. Umpire's called play on. It's called advantage, but oh, it ends up there's not much advantage at all happening there. And uh, they bring the ball further forward about 10 metres, and then it's over the line and out of bounds. Okay, big O helping in the ruck there against Walter. Walter ugly won the uh, tap out there. Oh, some nice handball there by the McLeod guys. Oh, the umpire, umpire Fife says you're throwing the ball. Uh, and so Resultan free kicks goes to Montmorency. Oh, O'Brien in front there. Oh, he's oh they're into the back of O'Brien. No free kick coming O'Brien's way. Play goes on. Comes to Montmorency. They bring the ball down forward. They've got the McLeod defence under pressure. Oh, but in the way there is Billy Damaneski. And he drives the ball up to to the uh, the wing position where there's a, a, a nice... A mark taken by... Uh, Montmorency there, he went to play on, the umpire said you interfered and he's awarded a 50 metre penalty against McLeod and has brought the right up to the tee for goal for what should be a, uh, a nice gimme kick for goal. Now this is going to be taken by Daniel uh, Coghill, number 38 for Montmorency, directly in front, 15 to 20 metres out, he trots in and he goes pop and oh, he has missed. Well. 
There's a uh, let off for McLeod. Uh, early stage of this game, we're seeing some errant, errant kicking for goal by the Montmorency players. But as the old saying goes, bad kicking's bad football. You've got no one else to blame. Okay, Richard Andrew to bring the ball back into play. Goes to the Bavillian side. Oh, up in front there was Big Walter. Over the back there is uh, Malikin. He picked the ball up nicely. Got the ball down to ground level. Got it forward to Jack B through Malikin to Bianchin. He kicks the ball up to the forward puck where it's bouncing, bouncing, bouncing near the boundary line. Oh, Hewitt taps it back. Hewitt taps it back. It comes to Lynch. He's sucking off the ground and he has kicked a miraculous goal. Would we describe that as a miraculous goal, Damien? What would you say? Yes, I think it's very good. Miraculous goal. Uh, anyway, it's a goal. And it's a second goal of the day to McLeod. They go to two goals. No behinds. 12 points. Leading Montmorency on three points. Well, it's uh, one of the few forays forward there by McLeod. And bang, and they got a goal. So, and that's what it's all about. Okay, from the centre bounce now, big longs in the ruck now for McLeod. He arguably won the tap out, but it's taken away by Montmorency. They get the ball up to half forward. The crown level, all oh, the McLeod players are, are playing the odds here, just soccering on the ground, doing what they can, just getting in first for the ball, and they're doing very well, and they force it over the boundary line and <laughs> out of bounds. Ball being thrown back into play now. Host the players in the ruck there. Oh, Monty have done very well there. They come away with it. Tackle play goes on. They bring the ball down to the forward pocket area where it's gone a bit wide on this occasion. And it's so wide, in fact, it's a free kick to McLeod. The recipient of the free kick will be O'Brien. O'Brien's taking his time. Looks up. Drives the ball up to short of the wing position. Out of side. Pack of players up there. Now it's at ground level and oh they're going in hard for the ball there. It's muddy, it's dirty, it's it's gooey, it's wet, all of that. Okay, at ground level. Oh McLeod player. Oh he's wrapped up there. Could be taken high. No, it's near the boundary on the umpires. As they often do, just say, ah, oh, don't worry about free kicks. We'll just chuck it back in. Chuck the ball back into play. Oh, a nice tap over there by John Andrew. He goes to Dave Adams. He gets it up over half forward. Uh, in the van there is Jack Bianchin uh, for McLeod. He runs this way. He runs that way. He gets the ball to Mellican. He gets a nice handball from Mellican looking for John Andrew. Didn't quite hit the mark on that occasion. And Monter are able to defend the ball to the outer side. They get to the half-back flank area where a player zigs this way, zigs that way and then centres the ball to the ever-reliable Keenan in the middle of the ground. Keenan then kicks the ball up to a, a lead up from and finding on this occasion the big fella down there, looks like it may be big Patrick Fitzgerald it is. He's marked right in front of the uh, Buckingham real estate sign over there. Okay, Patrick Fitzgerald comes in from a tight angle. Oh, it's right up in the teeth of goal. Big pack of players up there. Oh, and there's been interference has happened to uh, McLeod there. to long, deep in defence, and he'll take the result. In free. Oh, Billy Damaneski it is, I should say. Okay, now it's long. Get it right, Greg, it's long. Oh, it's a nice kick by Long, and he's spotted up Dave Adams at half-back flank, Pavilion side of the ground. He goes straight down the line, drives the ball over the centre wing position. The ball's bouncing, bouncing it towards half-forward. Uh, Bianchin's in there, so is a little fella, number 50 for Montmorency, who's done very well. That, that was uh, James Gould. They get the ball now to the outer side of the ground, where Keenan's in the van there, gets the pamble over to Stephen, then he gets it back over to Luke Jackson. They get the ball down to uh, half forward, but play goes on there. Oh, it's very hard to get clear, but clean possessions here. It's, it's just gets it's getting very, very messy, messy at the moment, and eventually the ball is forced over the line and out of bounds. Right in front of the Urban Bins banner over there, ball thrown back into play. We've got Long in the ruck there. Uh, he's up against number three, Scotty Nugent. And the big fella rings the free kick at the, from the ruck contest. Uh, McLeod worked the ball further forward. 
uh, Mont, sorry, work the ball further forward, but in the way there is recipient of the free kick is Jack Bianchi, and he drives the ball out over the centre wing wing, where it bounces, 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 and it's over the line, and out of bounds. It's actually rolled all the way through, arguably, the half-forward flank area, the end to which McLeod's kicking, right of screen, the lower plenty end, Mont going left of screen, Greensboro end. Okay, now from the uh, throw-in balls, taken possession here by 15 for um, Monty. He got out to his teammate, he got a nice kick down there. It might have been uh, Pettifer taking the uh, free kick. That's a nice mark, rather, and he kicked it down to the lead-up from Limbach, number eight. Yeah, Nugent was doing nice work in the ruck there. We've got... Uh, Number three, sorry, is Nugent. 15's been in everything. That's Michael Stephen, the blonde-headed fella. And of course, uh, Keenan is just a, uh, a machine for the Monty Club in the middle of the ground. OK, so we've got Lindbuck having a shot on goal here. And he's about uh, 35 metres out on a, on a tight angle. Comes in, shoots for goal, looks very good off the boot. No mistake there, and it's through for a goal. First goal of the day to Montmorency. They go to one goal three, trailing McLeod, two straight goals. Uh, just have a little drink there. Moisten the throat. And we're away again. Okay, it's the umpire about to throw the ball in the air. Got Nugent in the ruck for Monty and Long. Long uh, waits down and gets a clearing scramble kick up towards half forward. But it's all Montmorency there. They're able to mop up and get a nice kick down to the half forward area where there was a mark there by number 29 for Montmorency is Ben Walton. He gets the ball down to the centre half forward area where there's another strong mark there on this occasion to number three in Scotty Nugent. Now Nugent's marked uh, 40 metres out from goal, directly in front. Comes in, shoots for goal. Oh, he's offline. He appeared to rush that shot, didn't he? Rushed it and he's missed to the near side and it's through for the fourth behind of the day to Montmorency. They go to one goal, 4-10, trailing. Mont uh, McLeod on two goals straight 12. Ball being brought back into play now up to half forward. Oh, waiting like a little rover is big Paddy Fitzgerald, number 61, and he chips the ball down too. And finding be number four, no, nah, it's Limbach, number eight. So Limbach is, lines up the goals. Having plenty of shots on goal, peppering the Preparing this, the, uh, the goals. Only one goal for at this stage. Okay, this shot that hit the front for Montmorency comes in. He shoots. Oh, he's a lot happier about that one. It's the second goal of the day to Montmorency, and they hit the lead. They go to two goals four, make that 16. McLeod, two goals, zero behinds, 12. Scoreboard showing with 17 and a half minutes into the first quarter. Fantastic scoreboard they've got over there. Tick, tick, tick. It says it's 2.23 and we're 17 minutes and 46 seconds into the first quarter. Okay, back at the centre bounce. Long still in the ruck, up against Nugent. Up they go. Oh, Nugent won the tap out there, but only as far as John Andrew, who mops up well, gets on his left foot, gets the ball up to half forward, where ball comes to the ground level. Oh, Montmorency guys are clearing the ball well there. They're starting to team nicely now, Montmorency. They bring the ball through the centre wing position to half forward, but in the way there is Long. He's taken a uh, nice saving mark. Long's taking his time, summing up his options. Eventually goes to the outer wing position. So it's a wobbly kick just over the wing position. It's mopped up there by Montmorency. They get the ball down to uh, half forward, but in the way there is Story. It takes a nice sa safe chest mark. Gets on his trusted left foot, drives up to the half forward area. Ball off the hands there. An O line and out of bounds. But the umpire's picked up a little bit of a shove in the back to a Montmorency player. 
And it's a free kick to Montmorency, deep into the defence. They drive the ball up right in front of the uh, scoreboard there, but waiting back there as Richard Andrew takes a nice, comfortable chest mark. Okay, Andrew just goes a bit more... Uh, well, he goes up the line to half forward. Montmorency player dropped what he should have taken, so McLeod's good enough to mop up. Eventually, Story gets the ball on his left foot, gets it up to the... Uh, up towards the goal that's near the behind pace there and it's just squeezed in for a behind first point of the day to McLeod or behind I should say and so their points goes to two goals 113 trailing Montmorency 2416 oh, a nice driving kick to the outer side there by Montmorency player who was just taking a mark there he was able to uh, work Scooter White out of the contest there. Gets on his left foot, they drive the ball up to a half forward. Oh, the, the man's too big, he's too strong. The big fella there might have been Fitzgerald. He's taken a nice mark and then he, oh, a beautiful kick by Fitzgerald and he spotted up. Uh, Limbach, I think it is, on this occasion. And Limbach's marked the ball 30 metres out on a... Uh, about a 45 degree angle. Very prominent goal kicker for Montmorency. Uh, I think it might be Dean Limbach. Okay, oh, his kick's smothered. They've messed that up completely. They're back in trying to uh, amend the situation, Montmorency. But in the road there's uh, O'Brien. He's picked up beautifully and driven the ball up to the centre wing position where the ball was off the hands and over the line for a throw in. There was a bit of a verbal slash physical altercation in the middle of the ground between Rory Scott, number 12 from McLeod, and 51 O'Halpin for Montmorency before. Uh, the lads have thought better of it and decided to get on with playing football. <laughs> Ball, not off ball up here. Sarker in the ray couldn't get to the contest on that occasion. McLeod have won the ball from that uh, ball up and have brought the ball forward, but it's over the line and out of bounds. Free kick to Monty, half back's flank. They're able to chip the ball, come in board to number 38, which was Daniel Coghill. He gets the ball up to half forward. Uh, might have been a well, Monty bring the ball forward at ground level, they soccer it forward, it's a day, it's a day for that. Oh, there's arguably in the back to McLeod there. Umpire would have nothing to do with that. It comes to McLeod, players who are able to repel from defence very well. Oh, players fighting hard for the ball there in the middle of the ground. Oh, 32 for uh, McLeod there was, was desperate to get that ball and that was uh, Vez Premi. And um, Fires call for another ball up. Host of players around the ball. This occasion, oh, it comes to the ground. There might have been Malikin wrapped up there by Stephen. Oh, Andrew Murray's going in hard there. Oh, eventually, uh, the umpires ruled there was a free kick to Montmorency. <laughs> and Montmorency take the free kick, middle of the ground. Umpire feels someone's come over the, the line here, so he says, no, nah, you can go back and... He's cleared the five metre space. Too many players are in that area. So you can go back and have the kick. Just on the, uh, the back side of the uh, centre square. Get the ball up forward. Oh, the big fella might have been uh, O'Halpin. Uh, missed what he should have taken on that occasion. Comes to Dave Adams. He's all wrapped up there. Play goes on. Oh, Monty forcing the ball forward, but only as far as the boundary line. It's over the line and out of bounds. Little bloke Jesse Donaldson who came across to Monty from uh, Diamond Creek is uh, in everything at the moment. It's a day suited for the little blokes at ground level. Oh, you're around there. Another ball up here and the umpire says, give it to me guys. 
Waste no time, umpire five throws the ball in the air. Big O Halpin rings the tap out, gets to come down to Stephen. He gets it over to might have been Haynes on that occasion. They get the ball further forward. Gee, the McLeod guys are under under pressure in defence here, but oh, they're working it well there for O'Brien. He just gets a little scramble kick out wide, and he's found his friend, and that's the boundary line. And the ball is over the line and out of bounds. We're gone 23. Oh, right on 24 minute mark now of the lot of the uh, first quarter. Oh, McLeod trying desperately to work the ball forward, and they do it beautifully. Eventually comes out to Malikin in the middle of the ground. He drives the ball up over half forward. The ball's bouncing, bouncing, bouncing in the forward pocket near the boundary line. Oh, the Mott defenders are up to the task. They work the ball out of defence beautifully here with their handball and their kicking hitting the mark. Eventually they find little Jesse Donaldson at half back. Jesse Donaldson brings the ball down to the true wing position. Host of players up there and eventually it's off the hands of the pack and over the line and out of bounds. The vast majority of the play today is happening on the outer wing, the Parra Road side of the ground. Okay, eventually comes down to Story. Oh, he's gone back into trouble there and he's all wrapped up and the umpire says it's a free kick to Scotty Nugent from Monty, oh, he delivers the ball beautifully down to half forward, looking for one of his uh, lead up forwards there. Couldn't find him at this occasion. His teammates picked it up and he's kicked a beautiful kick to make it just so easy for the full forward in Limbach to run onto and take an easy mark 20 metres out directly in front. Now, Nugent's uh, sorry, Limbach's coming in to shoot for goal. And there's no... Oh, <laughs> he hasn't got his kicking boots on at the moment. Uh, him or his teammates. He's missed to the far side. And it's another behind to Montmorency. They go to two goals, 5-17. A leading McLeod. Two goals, 1-13. As we're approaching the 26-minute mark of the first quarter. Richard Andrew brings the ball back into play, decides to go to the V inside. Oh, big pack of players up there. And there's, a, there's a lovely mark to number 29 in Benny Walton. They've got some good uh, key position players down forward and Ruckman and guys with nice hands in. Now Walton fancies his chances, kicking from 50 metres out, kicking to the Greensbury end of the goal. Oh, it's a beautiful kick. It is a beautiful kick by Walton. It's gone all the way and has snuck in for a goal. So the third goal of the day to Montmorency goes on the scoreboard and the score ticks out too. Just wait for the scoreboard to flash it up. There it is, three goals, five. Uh, Montmorency, 23, leading. McLeod, two goals, one, 13. So very late stages, first quarter. There's a 10 point lead to Montmorency. <laughs> Now there's, some, there's been some interference or someone over the line so the McLeod take the free kick from the centre bounce to Walter he brings the ball out to the wing position to Story who kicks a beautiful kick down to the uh, forward pocket area looking for one of his lead up forwards but in the way there is uh, Montmorency player is taking the mark gets the ball up to half back oh in the way there is uh, Walter's done very well drives the ball back to to Lynch who at ground level oh it's close to the goal oh, guys are trying to get it off the ground they can't and in the end it's forced through for one behind one point to McLeod McLeod going right of screen a low plenty football club into the the ground. Okay, ball built back into play. Oh, up high from behind was Walter on that occasion. No, no free kick rule there. The umpire's allowed play to go on, and it's close to the boundary line and over the line and out of bounds. As we get to the 28 minute mark of the first quarter, just nine points in it. Um, Monty have had a number of shots for goal, I must say, though, in this first quarter and have missed <laughs> perhaps three, if you'd call gimme shots. So they wouldn't be too happy about that. Okay, now late in the first quarter, it's Dave Adams drives the ball up to 
full forward in the way there as the siren sounds with all Monty players. So we go to the break and it's Monty 3-5-23, Lady McLeod 2-2-14. Second quarter here at uh, Monty, number one over at Parra Road, Montmorency. There's a sound of the siren. It's the ball thrown in the air. Oh, big O helping in the ruck there. Ugly wins the tab out, comes down towards Keenan. He tried to get it off the ground. Oh, McLeod player taken there without the ball. The umpire had nothing of the free kick. And, and so, just calls for a ball up. Ground level there, there's another ball up. Uh, Halpern got the tap out, only as far as Vez Premi gets a, a handball away. Only as far as uh, Monty Rennes play, Mont Rennes play, but it comes to John Andrew, he gets a nice kick back into the middle of the ground. There's a free kick in the middle of the ground going to uh, Montmorency, number six in Haynes. He kicks the ball up, looking to a lead up to Montmorency player in the way of Scooter Wider took a nice mark. He's kicked the ball wide to Dave Adams, who's taken a nice diving mark. He then drives the ball up, looking for uh, Joel Kidd. He couldn't quite hang on to the ball on that occasion. Comes the ground level. And Joel Kidd's back in hard there, and the ball is over the line and out of bounds. Oh, well, ball being thrown back into play, long in the ruck there against our helping. And that was a free kick to Long, he's called advantage, it's gone down in the Tifa goal, where uh, Lynch runs in, and not too sure what happened there, but eventually the ball scrambled through for a behind to McLeod. They get the first score of the second quarter. Montmorency through number 28. Beautiful kick in there by Dean Giles. Gets the ball out to the uh, outer, outer side of the ground where Monty drive it further along the boundary line and it's gone over the line right in front of the scoreboard on the true centre wing position. Shows Monty three goals, five. Leading McLeod, two goals, three, 15. 23 to 15, ball thrown back into play. Big oh, helping in the ruck there. Oh, big double fisted. Belt away from the throw and there gets the ball over towards the boundary line. It's Monty at ground level. They get the ball up further forward, close to the boundary line. That's over the line and out of bounce. Right in the forward pocket there. Nice crowd in today. People scattered around there on the uh, the hill. Quite a sizable crowd behind the goals at the lower plenty end of the ground. The end to which Montmorency are kicking. Just waiting for the ball to come back into play here. Someone is uh, could be uh, badly injured here. Uh, play has been held up. Now. Could be Vez Premi in a bit of trouble there. He's, he's staggering <laughs> to his feet. He's been helped by a trainer there and a teammate. He's now collapsed again. One would think he may have some, uh, some form of concussion. Uh, the umpire has called for a stretcher to come onto the ground. To the left of the screen, we're seeing a trainer slowly trudging their way through the mud with a stretcher in hand. Not a great deal of sense of urgency. Oh, she's breaking into a trot now. She's trotting with the stretcher. She she's doesn't seem keen to go through the mud. She's tiptoeing around the mud. And she's back to a walk now. Meanwhile, the guy's in a lot of trouble, but... Uh, Stretcher bearer has just, uh, oh, just broken out of a wall. I nearly got into a trot. Nearly into a trot. Now she's back to a wall. Oh, back to a trot. Now she's just trotting now. Tiptoeing through the mud. Of course, the, the concern here is the health of the, uh, the young fellow from McLeod. I didn't see what happened to him there, but obviously he's, 
he has been uh, hit high and one would think has some form of concussion. Let's hope he'll be all right. He's got to his feet. Now, has decided no, I'll have nothing of the stretcher. So the lady with the stretcher thinks, oh, that was good. I've gone all the way through the mud. I'll, I'm not going back through the mud. I'm going to leave the ground on the far side. Good decision there. Now, the time clock is still ticking away here. Yeah. Five minutes, 15 seconds, first quarter. So one would think play has been stopped for a good two minutes here, perhaps three minutes. The ball is in the forward pocket, outer side of the ground, the end to which uh, Monty's kicking. Now, there's Premi, uh leaves the oval and plays about to resume. Ball being thrown back in here. Ball comes off the hand of the pack. Oh, in the forward pocket there. Player all wrapped up and the umpires call for another throw up. Close to the Tifa goal into which Monty are kicking. Ball thrown up in the air. Monty players go this way. Though. Eventually there's a snap on goal. It's looking good. Oh, it's close to goal. Eventually it comes down to Richard Andrews trying to defend there. Gets it over to his teammate. Not too sure it was on that occasion. But anyway, might be um, McLeod are able to bring the ball out to a half back. Or oh, host of players in there. It's getting really muddy, really messy here today at the Monty Oval. Okay, I'm going to call for a ball up. Long in the ruck there. Got the ball down to, it might have been John Andrew who's done well on that occasion. Gets the ball down to half forward. We are, Bianchin has judged the ball better than anyone else. And he's got a little, a nice mark and he chips it down looking for Nick Lynch. Didn't hit the target on that occasion. Gee, the McLeod guys are in there fighting hard for the ball. Lynch was in there hard. Oh, Monty's trying to defend there. They're being wrapped up. Eventually comes to Brownlee. Oh, he has a quick snap on goal. Got intercepted and the ball's being forced close to the, close to the uh, goal line there. And the umpire says... We'll have a ball up. Oh, it was like a game of rugby trying to get it over the line for a try then. Okay, the ball's thrown in the air and it's uh, it's belted over the line for or perhaps to be thrown in again. But the umpire, Fife, has picked out a free kick to McLeod. Someone may have been blocked from that um, ball up or he he could have, I hear some in the crowd saying it's deliberate. It could have been deliberate, uh, deliberately putting the line over the ball over the line for a throw in. So the result of the free, sipping the free kick is Ewart. He comes in, oh, he tries the old banana. It looks good, but not quite good enough. And the ball hits the, the goal post. One behind, 1.2. McLeod, Monty have got the ball now at half back. And we haven't say, said hello today to the biggest trombone in the West. Oh, hey, no. the fastest trombone in the West, is it Terry? Yeah. yeah. He's, we hear he's good on the trombone. He's in the West. So yeah, I finally gelled, yeah, with a little help from Terry. G'day Steve, how you going? <laughs> All right. Let's hope the West has been kind here. Come back to Melbourne. It's about top of about 12 in Melbourne today, and it's cold, it's wet, it's muddy. Yeah, it's Melbourne. It's Melbourne in the middle of winter, and we're in the muddy. But Montmorency, Montmorency, going really well this year, and uh, one would think they could be a chance to win the flag this year. Okay, now McLeod brought the ball forward. It comes down to a battle between. Uh, Hewitt there and his opponent number 28 who may be Dean Giles and it is Dean Giles eventually it's forced through for a behind to McLeod Giles gets on his left foot brings the ball out to the out to the outer side where oh, Montmorency are doing well here they work the ball through the wing position then they drive the ball up towards goal or oh, up in front there is uh, Monty player in a ground level it's picked up nicely there by 
and shot for goal. It's a goal to Montmorency. They've done well there. Guy got front and front and square there, and and it's a goal to Monty. They go further ahead. They get their fourth goal of the day. Now just flashed up on the scoreboard there that it was in fact Kane Pettifer so not only can he do it in the air he can do it at ground level too now Monty go out to a two goal lead they go to four goals five make that 29 leading McLeod on two goals five a 17 10 minute mark second quarter but expect this quarter to go an extra four or five minutes due to the unfortunate uh, incident involving uh, Matty uh, Vez Premi from McLeod who left the uh, field uh, holding his jaw and uh, one suspect he may have a little bit of concussion also. Another ball up in the centre of the ground. Now, umpire, umpire Fife has ruled there is a push, push out to Long. McLeod Ruckman's going to be the recipient of the free kick in the middle of the ground. Kick goes too long, right in the middle of the ground. He he drives the ball down over half forward, and uh, the kick falls short. It's getting very heavy and fell in the arms of uh, Ben Haynes. He got it out to Oh Halpin. Oh Halpin drives the ball forward in the way there was Scooter White or oh, McLeod players. Uh, Rory Scott went in hard there. His handball went exactly where he didn't want it to go. And eventually the ball's first forced further forward by Monty. It's rolled and rolled and rolled and eventually trickled through for a goal. I'm not sure who got the goal there. Number 24 looks very happy with himself about it. Could be Jesse Donaldson. And so it is another goal to uh, Montmorency. Eight or nine, was it? Might have been, I've just been informed by Terry, our, our cameraman, that it is possibly eight or nine. Uh, number nine looks a little little bit more happy about the situation at the moment, so maybe it was number nine. Okay, from the centre bounce there, I hop and got it away, and it comes down to Ken, and he drives it up to the full forward area again. Oh, the big foul there, Patrick Fitzgerald went high, didn't come down with the ball though. It's defended away by McLeod there, but only as far as Haynes, he belts the ball further forward, and a free kick to the man waiting in front there. And this may be... And it is Sammy O'Meara. I think he's uh, he may have played for, for many, many years for Montmorency. So the little man comes in 30 metres out on a slight angle, kicks for goal, and has no problems popping it through. So Montmorency get their sixth goal of the day. They go out to six goals, five, leading McLeod. Back on two goals, five. About halfway into the second quarter, and there's a good, uh, good lead to McLeod at this stage. Four goal lead. Time felt ticking, ticking. Just over 13 minutes. Yeah. Umpire Fife throws the ball in the air. Big Walter back in the ruck. Oh, the tap out there is won by O'Halpin. Comes the ground level, and the players they're all wrapped up there. Oh, help and helps Nugent to his feet. Oh, Walter for McLeod wins the tap out on this occasion. Uh, comes this forward to centre. There's a magnificent tackle laid by uh, Malikin for McLeod. The umpire will have nothing of giving a, making a free kick. And the umpire comes in, just throws the ball in the air and gets play on its way. The ground level. Oh. Number 23 there for uh, Monty. Tried to burst the his way through the pack and was all wrapped up there by McLeod. So a free kick to McLeod. They get the ball further forward, but in the way there might be, uh, and it is Tennant. Now, there's been some, uh, I just missed what happened there. What happened there, Terry? Lynch uh, been taken high there. Uh, which has been described by some supporters as a clip across the ear. And the umpire has picked it up and said there's a free kick to Lynch. Now Lynch shooting for goal 30 metres out directly in front. Kicking to the Greensboro end of the ground. He comes in, takes his time. And 
he has missed to his near side so it's the six behind of the day to McLeod they go to two goals six eighteen trailing at Monty six goals five forty one okay now we've got the big fella Giles from fullback driving the ball back into play goes to the outer side gets the ball right up to the wing position at ground level John Andrew was in there hard for hard for um, McLeod Story was in there Malikan was in there plays going in hard no place for faint hearts out there today uh, ball gets to half forward and the umpire has ruled I'm too sure what he's ruled there he's, he's ruled a free kick to McLeod and the free kick is going to the uh, uh, young fellow there kid he gets a handball over the story but the uh, umpire is very keen to get a runner off the ground Okay, Joel Kidd drives the ball down to the full forward position, but in the way there is uh, Monty Defender has taken a nice mark, drives out to the wing position where there is a uh, mark slash interference to uh, Montmorency player. Okay, they go to chip the ball further up, but oh, only gets as far as this Woodens, who gets it over to, might have been Branley on that occasion, gets the ball down to, to near Lynch, but he's double teamed. It comes down to Nick Branley, who has a snap for goal. Oh, that's a very good snap for goal by uh, Nick Branley. He snapped from the pocket and it's through for a goal. A third of the day to McLeod. They go to three goals, six, make that 24. Charlie Montmorency, 6-5, 41. So McLeod was able to capitalise there after the Montmorency player kicked the ball into the man on the mark on the outer wing position there. Okay, now the umpires are deciding to have a discussion here. They're all meeting together. They're not happy about something. Players stop, not sure what to do on this occasion. Eventually, umpire five trots away from the uh, situation there. He's going over to the Montmorency bench. And umpire five's going to have a word to the, the hierarchy there of Montmorency. The umpire Fife is not happy with the hierarchy from uh, Montmorency. Uh, the umpires have seen something which is not happening correctly, whether it's trainers, whether it's they're not using their interchange gate correctly. Uh, okay, so the game is stopped here. We're getting close to 18 minutes into the first quarter. One would suspect that this quarter could go on to 35-36 minutes due to the uh, these breaks in the game. Now, umpires come back on, and he is ruling that, in fact, well, we're not sure sure what he's ruling, what took place there. It's all a bit of a mystery. But he certainly, <laughs> Mr. Hurley feels that the umpire is perhaps just exerting his authority on this game. Anyway, ball back at the centre bounce. We're on our way there. Big O Halpin wins the tap out on this occasion. Comes to ground level and there's some interference there to Monty. Play goes on and through Keenan to get the ball further down forward. Nice punch away there by O'Brien. Deep in defence for McLeod. Picked up at ground level by Monty players and they get the ball further forward and there is... Uh, I didn't quite pick up what happened there. Was that a free kick or a mark, Terry? Downfield. Downfield. Went to, it's been ruled downfield. And Monty got a, a free kick. Uh, very close to goal here. They come in, have no trouble popping that through for a goal. So they get their seventh for the day. They go to seven goals, five. Uh, 47. Leading McLeod. Uh, are on three goals, 6.24. They've so still a very handy lead to Monty here. 23 points in front in these very uh, 
in clement conditions one would think uh, if either of these sides gets to 12 goals they will win the game ball being thrown back in the air by umpire fife now oh, a nice tap out there by matt walter from mcclough gets down to john andrew he gets across towards his brother but he couldn't hang on to the ball there eventually i'll help him picked up the ball got the ball to the outer side there players going in hard there the ball's very close to the boundary line it's been socket further forward by montmorency then they run around get a kick into the man on the mark john andrew mops up there gets the ball over to scooter white he runs down from half back and does a nice tumbling torpedo punt down over center wing oh Brandley's done well there he sucked the ball uh, further forward gets it up to the full forward position but oh in the way there was monty they're able to defend very well and they burst out of defense and uh in, in the, comes to the hands of uh, andrew murray couldn't quite hang on at that stage now monty are all oh, they're running well monty they're teaming well and they get a scramble kick forward a little bit fortuitous where that kick ended up eventually they keep going getting close to goal and they get it scrape it in for nah it's not for it didn't get in for a point. It was a uh, ended up overline now the bounce on the floor. I think they come to Scooter White. Now he's run across the face of goal and he's got the ball down to a uh, half back where Walter couldn't quite hang on to the ball there. In there hard was Story. He's done well. Got a handball back to John Andrew. Then over to Scooter White. He scrambles a kick further along to the Anchin right in front of the coach's position. He tumbles his kick up to the wing position, but in the way there was was Tennant. Now, now, now the, the guy Tennant played on there, but the umpire has ruled that you've gone over the mark and he's given a uh, free kick, a 50 metre penalty <laughs> to Tennant. He's brought him down to the tee for goal. And uh, now his kick has gone forward, but oh, just into the arms of Harris. Now his scramble kick rather fortuitously ended up in the hands of Murray. And eventually they ended up getting it over to John Andrew and they defend well from the uh from that attack by montmorency they get the ball to half forward montmorency oh you it's in strong there for the ball at ground level no resulting free kick giles defends on his favorite left foot gets it out in front of the scoreboard there uh, monty doing very well here they're going this way that way they then get the ball down to half forward where it's belted over the line by mcleod defender on that occasion may have been uh harris and it was harris the ball now being thrown back into play. Okay. Ball thrown back into play. There's oh, players in going hard there for the ball. Eventually it's a free kick to Harris. He gets it over to his teammate there. Drives it down to half forward. But oh, the Monty defenders are sitting back, mopping up easily there. They transverse the play. Now over to the V inside. Then they cut inside to the middle of the ground where they've spotted up the little fella in number 23, who happens to be Benny Sinclair. They get the ball down forward, big punch away there by O'Brien. At ground level, might have been Murray there, is it? I'm not sure, yeah, Murray back to Woodhams. O'Brien knocks the ball further on to his uh, teammate there. They get the ball to center wing. Uh, McLeod player in there, might have been Lynch on this occasion. Uh, he's wrapped up, players going in left, right and centre. Monty doing very well around the ball there, but in the way is Harris there. He gets a scramble kick forward, but oh, only as far as, as number uh, 50 for Monty tries to burst his way through the pack. He's well wrapped up by Melican. There's no result in free kick. Eventually, Monty come out of the fence through number 34 there and gets a nice chip down forward. But at ground level there, O'Brien's wrapped up the... Uh, Monty player very well there. Then there's a scramble kick forward and it's oh it's near the T for goal. <laughs> oh guy there for Billy Damaneski's done so well for for McLeod. He's going in hard there, Damaneski, but oh in the road there's uh, Monty player gets the ball down to the T for goal. Up goes the big fella, couldn't quite hang on to it, and eventually it's forced through for a behind to Monty. Gee, the uh, McLeod defence is under pressure here today. So it's Monty leading 48 points to McLeod, 24 with 24 minutes into the second quarter. But one would think it's going to go at least 34 minutes due to those interruptions in play. Um, 
Richard Andrews doing well. He's got a handle away as far as Ryan Harris. He gets the ball into Malik Can. Gets the ball out to Joel Kidd. Then back to, to Ryan Harris. But oh, in the way there is number 19 in Craig Clint, who goes back to take his kick. But he just, he just falls over. Eventually they transverse the play to the outer side. Get the ball down just over the centre wing position. Oh, very hard to take marks here today. Ball comes to ground level. Monty doing well now tonight. It's a nice kick forward there. There's a mark taken at half forward. And they drive the ball right up into the Tifa goal. Billy Damaneski's in there first and he gets the ball to boot and sees it over the line and out of bounce. Just a scramble kick off his off his boot. Okay. Oh, well, McLeod defence under pressure here. They're battling to defend to the outer side, and they do, but in the way, it's all Monty Montmorency. Okay, then they bring the ball further down. There's a nice lead up mark taken by, we don't know who. Might be Ben Walton, I'm not sure. Can't see the number. Now, Walton goes back to have a shot for goal with Monty leading seven goals, six, 48. McLeod 3624. Comes in, shoots for goal, looks nice off the boot. It looks straight. And it is another goal of Monty. They get their eighth for the day. They go further ahead. They've got a handy five goal lead at this stage. Yeah, it was Ben Walton, number 29. Took a very nice mark in front of the pavilion here in the first quarter. So Back at the centre bounce, oh, we've got Walter in the ruck here for McLeod up against the big fella O'Halpin. Stephen, number 15 for Monty's done well today. Ball comes to ground level. And the umpire, we're not too sure what he's ruled, but he's ruled it's a free kick to, to uh, Montmorency player number 15, Stephen. He goes to the outer side, looking for a teammate there, didn't quite hit the mark there, and the ball's bouncing, bouncing near the Boundary line still in play. Players going hard there. Eventually Haynes picks it up, gets it on his left foot, gets it down to ha the forward pocket. Scooter White's in the row there. He goes this way, he goes that way, then runs around on his left foot and gets a very, very short kick and spots up his teammate in Nan Curvis. Deep in defence. Nan Curvis transverses the play to the outer side and it comes to. Well, we got it wrong there because some it was another player who transversed over to Nan Curvis. So oh, beautiful tackle laid there by Malikin. Oh, big O helping tries to burst his way through the pack, and he's all wrapped up there. Nice. And the siren sounds with the scoreboard showing we're 27 minutes and 27 minutes into the second quarter. Well, I'm amazed. This is 27 minutes into the second quarter when one would have thought it would go 37 minutes this quarter. After the two... Uh, the first quarter now for. I don't know, but we had two very, very significant breaks in this quarter, both of two to three minutes at least. So 